Hello and welcome to the OpenCV Basics series. I'm George and in this video we're going to cover the basics of controlling windows. We're only going to be looking at the basic OpenCV functionality. We're not looking at the extended functionality by using something like Qt or other uh, graphical user interface programs. So uh, the good news is that means there's not a, a whole lot to learn but at the same time you do very quickly become limited if you start trying to create advanced controls. So just realize you're not going to be able to do a ton here. Right now we're just going to cover controlling the window itself. So first of all we need an image file. Hopefully you already have one from the previous tutorial. I have one set up in my uh, my working directory, me.jpg. We're going to load that in. Uh, mat file 1 is equal to uh, im read and that's going to be me.jpg and I'm going to bring this in as a cv underscore load image and let's just do unchanged so a color image in this case. Now uh, we need a window to show. In the previous lessons we just used im show willy-nilly like. Uh, we're going to take a little bit more care this time though and we're going to use the named window function. This is a great way to declare the window and set it up uh, a little bit more carefully than before. Uh, the user could resize that window and do whatever they wanted to. You may have some restrictions on how the user interacts with that window, so using name window allows us to do that. The first thing is a handle to the window, and that's a string value. We don't actually deal with the, the window itself. We don't get a window object, so to speak. That doesn't even make sense, really. But the idea is this is our string handle, and we pass it to these window commands to let it know either one, uh, to create a new window if it has never seen this string before, or two, to actually um, edit an existing window uh, if it already exists with that name. So in this case, we're just going to call this uh, color. And the next parameter is very important, and this is a flag. Uh, once again, the CV flag is easy, CV underscore window, and now we have our window flags. Um, for instance, we have auto size, free ratio, full screen, keep ratio. There's only a few of these you're probably going to use. The first one, auto size, is important. It automatically sizes the window and makes it so the user cannot adjust it. The second one, um, free ratio or keep ratio, um, with this version of Windows as well as this version of OpenCV, free ratio and keep ratio function exactly the same. It allows you to resize it. Normally keep ratio should have kept the proportionality of the image, but it fails miserably and doesn't work. So feel free to use either one. Let's use free ratio to start with. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a second window here. And we'll just call this, um, call the first one color, let's just call this fixed. Do CV underscore window and do a auto size on this case. So we have two named windows here. We have, well, there we go. Now named window will generate the window, but it's not going to have any data associated with it. It's going to be a giant blank window basically. Oh, if you notice my error, I hope you did, we didn't use a wait key. So the problem is that named window was executed, the window was generated, but then wait key wasn't there to halt the program from finishing. Wait key will stall until we get a key to come in or I could specify an integer value and that's how long in seconds to wait before finally moving on. Let's go ahead and run this again. So here we are, my two empty windows. You'll notice they have odd sizes and actually if, if you look, uh, color has the position from a previous video I already did. And that's kind of the par for OpenCV. It has these, it's gonna put windows in kooky places, but we have the power to manipulate that and that's what we're gonna learn in just a second. Let's stop this. So next up we have, let's, let's put some data in these. We use the I am show command to actually put a matrix object inside of it. So let's do color first, we're gonna do both of them, and then we wanna put in file one. And let's make both of them a little bit different really quick. Let's do file one and file two. And let's do cv underscore load underscore grayscale. All right, and we're going to copy this to file two but we want this to be in fixed. Remember, it's gotta be the right handle. Otherwise, if I had done color both, it would have immediately written file one to it, and then would have immediately written file two to color, and we would never have seen anything from the first write. Hit the yes key, get both of those out here, and here they are. Now let's take a look, because I forgot to do this, but you'll notice on the color one, I can resize it, but on this one, I have no ability to resize this at all. Now I can do a full screen, um, you didn't get to see that, but basically what it did was it full screened everything gray except for the upper left hand corner being this image. Let's stop. 
So the next thing for us to do is resize the windows. And that's easy. We just call resize windows. Resize window. We pass it the string, the handle to the window we want to modify. And then of course, we pass in the fi the uh, excuse me, the width and the height. Usually you want to use the number of rows and columns in the existing image. So I can go ahead and choose file1.columns, which is the X component, file1.rows. Now if I wanted to resize, so the, the auto size one is interesting. If I try to make this smaller, well, it's actually going to cut the image off. It's not going to resize the image because it's automatically been set up to be a specific size. So let's go to fixed and do half and half and see what happens when we resize these. So the first one will do nothing. So there's that and there's half that size on a fixed one. Let's have the size on the free one, the one that we're actually allowed to manipulate. We'll notice a quick difference. So here you can see the difference, right? So the fixed one did not resize the image. It just actually made the window smaller. The, the image is still there. On the other hand, with the uh, free ratio or the keep ratio, it actually does resize that image, as you can see, and I can continue to resize it afterwards. Hit stop. Now that we can resize windows, you're probably going to also want to um, not just resize them, but position them around the uh, screen. And we do that with move window. I'm coming from a C-sharp thing, so I keep capitalizing functions. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's go ahead and do color and pick an int and a y. So let's see, I'm, this is a 4K screen that I'm recording on, uh, so, so let's do like 2000 and a y of, um, I don't know, 1080, somewhere around that. Should be about right. And uh, we'll do the other one, just pushed over to the side, maybe, um, I don't know, we'll push it over 500 pixels, I don't know. Now you can sit down and do the true math and figure out the, the size of your images and where they should actually go. Oh, see, here's a great example. You saw the one over here, but the other guy came off screen because, once again, I messed up and didn't put the right handle. Oops, copy, paste, handle. Now it was a little bit far over on the X, so let's just do, um, let's do 1800 and let's do, I don't know, 2000 for this one and make that actually even smaller, 6000. So you can use the columns and rows in the image to figure out how wide the image is and then to put it in the right place afterwards. So here you can see both have actually popped up, but because I ended up resizing them, um, they're a little bit smaller than I expected. So if I wanted to, I could, instead of resizing these, because that's just messing with my math in my head, let's just do a color one is going to be equal to file one. Uh, its position is going to be, um, what do we have? We had 1600, something like that. That was fine. This was too far down. Now let's do 800, 800 pixels. And uh, for this one though, I want this to be offset by the size of the image. So I want it to move over to the side. So let's take that 1600 and add to that the file one dot columns. And over here, um, 800 is fine. Now, actually, I'm probably gonna want a little bit of a buffer between these images because there is a border. So let's just add five to it. Hit run, yes. And here we go, almost side by side. Tiny little bit of gap between the two just to make them a little bit separated, okay? And that's all there is to moving the windows, resizing the windows, and showing windows, and of course, establishing them with named windows. Now, what we're not covering in this video are the, um, the, the tracking bars and the callbacks that you can do when you click on a window and actually make something happen. We'll cover them in a different video just because that'll take some time. Thank you.